So to start with what's been going on with me, as um, those of you who've been before know, I'm the author of Saving Sun Bears, which is the biography of Dr. Wong Su Ti. And it's all about his adventures in saving wildlife in Borneo, um, namely sun bears, because he runs the Bornean Sun Bear Conservation Center. Uh, and this is his life story about spending six years in the jungles of Malaysia, studying the elusive bear and, and then creating the incredible uh, rescue center that he's created. So once I'd written that, which was part of my Doctor of Creative Arts degree, I then realized the importance of engaging young people in some of these discussions. So that prompted me to approach Wong again about the possibility of writing his stories for children. So that's um, led to the series, the Wildlife Wong series. I've written now six books about Wong's adventures with different animals in the, in the jungles of Malaysia. And that was, uh, series was shortlisted for an educational publishing award in Australia in 2022. So um, I've got all sorts of ideas for new books in my head and um, those are progressing. So I'll be telling you a little bit more of those over the next few months. What have I been doing though? Since I last saw you in the last month, um, I introduced, really briefly introduced a new workshop that I have designed um, and I'm taking into schools called the Parliament of Animals. Um, and this month I actually did ran a pilot for this um, event, which was really exciting. This was developed along with my two USC interns this semester. The two interns are in a picture there with their with their nice little fingers up. We've got um, Claire Brady and Taylor Banks who helped with the, with the production of this. Um, Claire is actually just, um, studying uh, uh, theatre arts and so she was helpful in actually um, creating the characters for this for this workshop. So this is a day-long workshop that I run in schools now with them um, and it's it, it poses this question that there's a fictional village called Hutan situated in the middle of Borneo along a river. The local government is planning to build a bridge across the river and the mayor, who's me, has called a um, uh, called a, a meeting of the, of the town to determine whether we want to actually support that. But differently than normal town meetings and this town meeting, the animals are invited to. So each of the participants in this workshop um, are given an animal to research. They spend time researching the animal. They spend time dressing up in the animal and becoming the character with all the mannerisms that they've researched. And then they come to the Parliament of Animals um, to actually argue their case for or against the bridge. Um, at the last act in this, um, in this uh, day long workshop, they vote about whether they actually believe um, the, the bridge is a good thing for them or not. Um, and then we go into a bit of a discussion about civics and parliamentary systems and how that works. So I'm really excited. This has been a two year project. It's taken a long time to come out with and I'm looking forward to launching it in schools next year. Anyone listening who'd like me to come to your school, please reach out and let me know and I'll give you some more detail. All right. The other thing I've been doing <laughs> this month, well, two more things. The, la the next thing was that with my um, partner and, my, and two close friends, I walked the Great Ocean Walk, uh, which is in Victoria in Australia. It's um, quite a long walk. It took seven days. Um, uh, no, six days, five nights. And you're walking along some of the most beautiful coastal areas of Australia. Um, Many of you have probably heard about the Great Ocean Road and the Great Ocean Road travels along that southern coast of Australia. It's it's a world class iconic area in Australia, but part of the road, as you can see with that dotted grey line, part of the road doesn't follow the coast and that part is where the Great Ocean Walk follows the coast instead. So you, the only way to see that coast is actually on the walk. So it was a magnificent journey, um, which uh, took 103 kilometers, and we ended up um, at the 12 Apostles. Along the way, uh, we saw all kinds of amazing wildlife, like um, uh, wallabies. We saw lots of wallabies. You can see one over my shoulder there. And one of the most incredible experiences I had was walking through um, an, an area of eucalypt forest with uh, koalas make just sounding off all through this forest and in Queensland um, koalas are an endangered species but down on the Great Ocean Road there are far more koalas than there are in my area 
So we actually had an experience with this koala here walking across the path in front of us and drinking from a puddle, then heading up a tree right next to us. So that was that was absolutely incredible. The sound of koalas barking, though, was a highlight for me. We ended up, as I said, at the 12 Apostles. And this is my team finishing our 103 kilometer walk at the 12 Apostles um, on the coast of Victoria. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> my um, my friends then flew back home. And I flew on to um, Adelaide in the state of South Australia. Um, in the state, South Australian, um, there's a school um, which runs a festival called the Once Upon a Festival. It's a children's literary festival and I had been asked to present at this literary festival. So I was very excited to do that. I spent three um, days in the festival doing workshops with ages from um, age three all the way up to age 17, doing writing workshops and wildlife uh, workshops with different ages. So I've got some pictures there of the youngsters um, learning about all sorts of wildlife. And Pongo, my, um, my orangutan puppet friend, uh, actually fell in love on this journey. She fell in love with another puppet, as you can see there. So we had, some, had a bit of fun on this one. <laughs> 